Uh, so you don't want to steal uh, one another's question? No, it's fine. Kicking okay. off coach the, the draw. Uh, tough one against, uh, I'd say tough one because yeah, it's it the is. only team that it has is. got a draw against you now. I'm, I'm talking about in this period with coach Lenny as the head coach. Yeah. You guys went there, scored first, but just look. No, it was, it was a tough one. And uh, we knew as we went there that it was not going to be easy after having looked at what they were capable of. And testimony to that is what happened yesterday. And uh, make no mistake, TS Galaxy are also a hell of a good team. Defensively, they are solid. But getting six past their defense says a lot. But we'll go to Cape Town. And unfortunately with us, our brief and responsibility has always been the same. We have to defend it. How do you then look at the last two? I mean, the, the other match, I don't know if it was the last one, was a 3 0 loss, and then there was this draw. What is it about this team, coach? When you just break it down, what is it about the Stellenbosch team that's just a bit we, tricky we, for some We had a small discussion with Stevie uh, just before the match, the previous one. And one of the questions or discussion line was they are upfront, their movement on top is quite, quite, quite fascinating. And what happened yesterday is not a surprise to us because it is clear what they do. And based on that, even when we went to Cape Town, aware of that, we still, we still suffered a setback. So we'll have to go there knowing exactly that they keep doing this and they do it so well. So we have to respect it. Coach, as, as someone who's been in the game for quite long, mm -hmm. what do you make of how Coach Rani has come into this head coaching role and in, in recent times there have been controversial stories coming up as well, but he seems to have managed the whole situation. Uh, first of all, the guy is unbelievably intelligent. He is brains, brains, brains. You never get into coaching and succeed at a young age without brains. He's genius. And Unfortunately, in modern management, it's not only about the capability to do your job, to be a great technician. It's about managing the rest of the other dynamics around you. And one, one friend of mine, Roger Desa, once said, 90% of our earnings, 90% of what the coach earns, is about everything that happens around. And only 10% is about what they do on the pitch. And I think Coach Rulani has mastered that. He's very calm, calculative, he sees things in time, and the wisdom and ability to respond appropriately. And I make no mistake, it's not easy to be head coach at Sundowns. In fact, any big team. But managing that is one of the primary, primary, primary objectives. You have to be very careful because whatever you say goes. And unfortunately, in modern world, what you say, gone, if you want to rectify, it gets even worse. So you got to be careful what you're going to say. Think about it before you say it. And he's mastered that. Coach, uh, obviously, you know, one of the people who gave him a chance um, at Platinum Stars. Was this apparent? Uh, that's way, the that's way back, man. That's way back. He's developed into a monster. He's, he's unbelievable. And it's beautiful to see genius striving. And I don't want to start putting stories that after two, three weeks and then they come out, it appears as if I said this yesterday, but fact remains, he's genius. And even when we worked together at Platinum Stars then with, with Freeze, Alan Freeze, it, it was just clear. And beyond anything, the hard work, the passion has just gone to another level. It's amazing. How much, sorry, how much consulting does he do, obviously? You Let me field in this one. I love this one. Oh, okay. You were saying, sir? Coach of the season? Please, so be it. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a tendency that no things must be done based on certain circumstances. But I think he's done a hell of a great job. Let's be honest. And you can't say whether they should give it to him or not. But if his work says give it to him, you have no option, but you have to oblige. Coach, you've quite hands on. No, he's, he's here, my big brother, my apologies. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, how much consulting does he do with you and my mother, obviously? You it's very coach. cohesive. It's very cohesive. It's not easy to have an environment in, in, or on shared leadership. And it needs a lot of maturity. And you can see the eight of us were seated on the bench. Already there, you feel the brains at work. And sometimes a, a confrontation that is... It's more like simmering. Even in their silence, you can feel that there's something about to clash here. So it's normal for coaches because brains is brains. And where there's brains working, there's going to be difference in opinion. 
but it needs maturity to merge those differences so that as it comes out, it comes out solid. But in my first year at Sundowns, and I think it has taken so long to be in front of you, now you're asking me questions that I should have failed at in my first year, but it's okay. In my first year at Sundowns, one thing that we all agreed to, we cannot fail Sundowns because the opportunity given to us, and Wes, Wes, you are black people. The myth that has been sold about black people not working together, we needed to find that and kick it out of the window. Whatever circumstances, we had to stick together and work and make it work. Because one, we were not only an example to football. We were not an example to politics, not an example to religion, not an example to business, but example to society and the world. Send a message that black people can work together. That was very important. When you come to Plot Group, you see you're quite hands on in the training pitch. How would you define your role within the club? Because you know, it's been spoken about a lot, especially amongst the fans. It's, it's beautiful. His energy is amazing. And, and you, you cannot imagine having three, four coaches on the park. You don't do that, man. You don't want a chaos because players are watching what's happening and players have to absorb information. You can imagine if I lack focus based on the lenses that are here and the cell phones that are here, I'm going to be a mess. So it's like coaching, delivering message to a player. So we need to find a way of saying, now how does this information go? And I know before the end of these interviews, some of you will be saying, but why have you not been stepping up for interviews? Purely, purely because of that, there has to be clarity, there has to be order, there has to be maturity. And that happens in an environment where people are intentional and deliberate about the process. And the process itself is clear enough to have a clear definition. So there has never been any glitches. It had been unbelievably tremendous. So is this you basically, I don't know how to put it, put it sacrificing anyhow. yourself for the good of the team? Everybody at Sundown sacrifices themselves. Just yourself personally. No, no, no. S Sundowns, institutional success is there at Sundowns. Whether you look at the previous coaches and all those, the, the club itself, the president himself and his board, he's hell bent to see things working for Sundowns. And it would be very unfortunate for people given the opportunity to come be part of that process and success, then you want to be making yours. There's a book that I read, um, Ego is the Enemy. They speak of, in success, there's innocent climb. Innocent climb, innocent climb. But as soon as you reach a certain level, then there's a me disease. That's where ego chips in. So it is also very important to have that at the back of your mind when you work, that there's success, there's success, there's success. But remember what ego is the enemy is. As soon as you reach success, now you want to make the me disease. So you got to be very careful and conscious about that. I think we're almost done. Well, Kenya, 